The Nazi occupation of Europe provided untold horrors for millions of people around the continent and beyond. During this time, a large percentage of people, mainly from Jewish and Roma backgrounds, were rehoused into forced labor camps, most of which also doubled as death camps. These places were often used as experimental sites to determine the most effective methods of execution, which were as brutal as they were senseless. Today, we are taking a look at some of the most brutal execution methods used at the Stutthof concentration camp. So stay with us. Located in the outskirts of the town Stutova, an hour or so east of Gdańsk in present-day Poland, Stutthof concentration camp was initially used to house the hierarchy of the Polish government once the Nazis have invaded the country. The camp is also of historical importance due to the fact that it was the first to be set up outside the borders of Germany. Sadly, it would be last to be liberated by the Allies. As you will know, Nazi concentration camps during World War II were used for some horrific things, including medical experiments, forced labor, and horrifically, mass murder. However, the Nazis had a problem. They simply couldn't figure out a way to efficiently exterminate, as they put, such a large amount of people. Camp guards at places such as Stutthof went through multiple different methods in a bid to try and find the one which would make their lives easier. In a horrible twist, Nazi leaders were hell-bent on trying to find an execution method which would be more humane for the mental health of their soldiers. One of the more obvious ways German soldiers chose to carry out the Holocaust was via mass shooting. Prisoners who were no longer deemed fit for work would be lined up, often in groups, and shot. More often than not, their graves would already be dug, and they would be executed standing beside them in the hopes their lifeless bodies would simply fall into the pits. This was a common sight at Stutthof in the early days of the war, but the Nazis had a problem. Simply shooting prisoners was a costly exercise, and they were going through a lot of ammunition. Party chiefs were obsessed with finding an easier, more cost-effective solution. So, as the war dragged on, they were constantly on the lookout for cheaper methods. One very cheap way camp guards came up with was also one of the most rudimentary, hanging. At the start of the war, the Nazis used hanging as a form of intimidation, but there was a bit of a problem, as it was obvious from the very beginning of the procedure what the end goal was. Prisoners would become increasingly anxious as they knew what was about to happen, and this often resulted in many uprisings which the guards had little to no interest in constantly dealing with. Another brutal way in which the camp higher-ups at Stutthof decided to murder their inmates was by lethal injection. However, they ran into the same problem they had just shooting their victims, as they needed to pay for the poison in order to administer it to camp detainees. Lethal injection was often used on prisoners who were seen as a problem as a simple and easy way to get rid of them, but it wasn't the long-term, cost-effective solution the Nazis were determined to find. You have probably heard the deplorable name of Josef Mengele uttered on more than one occasion. This was the man. We're not going to call him a doctor, as doctors are sworn to take care of people who was in charge of medical experiments at Auschwitz, and is often attributed with some of the more horrific medical procedures during the war. But it wasn't just Mengele who was using prisoners to barbarically test insane medical theories on. Concentration camps all over Nazi-occupied Europe had doctors who were eager to impress Hitler and his Nazi goons, and Stutthof was no different. In one particularly upsetting account, a woman known only as Miss B explained how doctors at Stutthof experimented on her genitalia with different instruments and cuts before also detailing how she was given different medication and used as a human guinea pig. Miss B is one of the few lucky patients of men like Josef Mengele and his dishonorable counterparts at Stunoff. While she survived the war, she was unable to have children thanks to Nazi medical experiments. Others were not so lucky. As you can imagine, these medical experiments were ultimately designed to see what humans could endure and often involved transplanting various body parts and organs and barbaric acts, such as seeing how high a human being could survive falling from. A particularly brutal part of this particular experimentation program was chemical and biological agent testing. Ultimately, 
thousands of prisoners lost their lives thanks to Nazi medical experiments in one of the worst cases of cruelty in human history. The Nazis had stumbled upon the method of execution most often associated with concentration camps in late 1939. With their euthanasia program designed to murder people with mental and physical disabilities, they had figured out that Zyklone B was the most effective and quickest way of disposing of humans. Initially, they used gas vans, but quickly graduated to killing centers at camps such as Studoff. In 1943, a gas chamber was built at the facility, just in time for the Nazis' final solution, which began in earnest the following year. Of course, this was the most efficient method of mass murder, and it is thought that more than 60,000 people were killed at Stutthof during this time. Whilst there were more obvious methods of execution we have already mentioned, there were some other more subtle but equally brutal ones. Starvation was often used as a weapon against problem prisoners or just as a means of entertainment for the guards. When you couple this with the fact that people in the camp were working upwards of 15 hours a day in horrible conditions, then a lack of food becomes one of the biggest weapons the Nazis could use. Severe malnutrition was a constant during the war, and we have all seen pictures of liberated camps with emaciated prisoners everywhere. Thanks to tactics such as starvation, illness was also a big problem. If the body isn't getting enough nutrition, it will struggle to fight off disease. This was often a bigger concern for prisoners than the gas chambers themselves, and those unfortunate enough to experience Stutthof were no different. Another brutal way in which prisoners often died was simply due to exposure. For those of you who haven't been to northern Poland in the winter, it's very cold. Its position on the Gulf of Gdansk in the Baltic Sea means that winters are long and harsh, and prisoners were often under duress and lacked any sort of warm lodging. Of course, these living conditions meant that many prisoners simply didn't survive the winter and died of exposure, as has been documented hundreds of thousands of times since the war ended. Concentration camps were brutal places. The biggest reason for this was the systematic abuse and mistreatment suffered at the hands of the guards. At Stutthof, physical beatings and systematic abuses were rampant, and this ultimately resulted in the deaths of many prisoners. After the war, many guards who were proven to have been at Stutthof and other camps in Nazi-occupied areas would claim that they were just following orders. Thanks to the testimonials of those who were on the receiving end of these vile practices, we know that a lot of the time, this simply wasn't true. In January 1945, with Allied forces closing in, the Nazis decided to evacuate Stutthof and make a dash for eastern Germany. Of course, being in the middle of winter, this had disastrous consequences, and the weaker prisoners simply perished during the march. Advancing Soviet forces cut the Germans off, so the Nazis forced their prisoners back to Stutthof before an evacuation by sea was attempted. Some prisoners were forced into the sea before being shot by Nazi guards. Whilst Stutthof wasn't one of the more infamous camps such as Treblinka or Auschwitz, it was certainly a big part of a well-oiled Nazi extermination machine. As time passes, people sometimes forget or even trivialize what happened at extermination camps such as Stutthof, but this would be doing a disservice to the people who were subject to some of the worst things human beings have ever inflicted on their fellow man. As the saying goes, those who forget history are destined to repeat it. So, as upsetting as it is, we should remember what happened at Stunoff and beyond and never let it happen again. This has been Nasty History, and I will see you again next time.